Hello Devils! Welcome to the first episode of EVTV for the 2017-2018 year. I'm your anchor, Jamie Rawlings. And I'm your anchor, Hannah Medina. We have a very special episode for you all today, and we hope you're as excited as we are. Jamie, do you drive yet? Not for a few months, but even if I did, I wouldn't be able to understand the new parking permit system to save my life. Well then, listen closely to our next package where our reporters go to Mr. Mandeville to find out how the parking permit system works this year. Brian, you can't park there. Yeah, why not? Well, two reasons. Number one, you don't have a parking pass. And number two, this is a visitor parking. Oh yeah, Ryan, so what else can I do? Well, you know, funny you should say that. We actually interviewed Mr. Mandeville. Here's some of the things he said. Uh, we're bringing it back. We actually had a parking pass system here years ago. And the reason we're bringing it back is that as we grow uh, as a population, uh, we continue to have more students that want to drive to school, yet we don't have enough parking spaces. The reason we're doing this is also to protect students. I think it's really important that any driver that comes here feels that they know that all the kids that are in the lot have a license, registration, and most importantly insurance, because if there were a little fender bender uh, and the kid didn't have insurance, then the, the driver that got hit would be responsible for the damage. Um, if there were a student that had their lights on, uh, we could go right to the number and know exactly whose car that was and then call them out of class so they can um, take care of that. Or if something happens to their vehicle. Um, we actually had um, some minor damage that happened to a vehicle and I just looked at the parking pass number and I was able to find the student within a couple minutes and then explain what happened. So definitely an advantage. Um, some of the disadvantages are, you know, I know so some of the sophomores will be driving in the spring. They're really excited. But, you know, as a privilege to come on campus, I think we're offering it just to juniors and seniors. Um, kids that are sophomores or if they are not interested in a parking pass, they can park over the library where the administration and some of the fall coaches are parking. Um, so you can get a brisk walk in the morning. Um, you can also park over in the bus loop or more importantly, think about carpooling or walking to school. Um, uh, in the future, our uh, part of our construction project is that we're gonna add a whole new lot over where the trailer park is, which we're gonna do kind of regional parking. So students that come to school that live in Eagle may take Highway 6, they're gonna be able to park in the front. Um, if you live up in Chatfield Corners or even Buckhorn, you'll be able to come down Valley Road and park in the back. So as you can see, Mr. Mandeville put a lot of time and effort into this, and I think we should all just respect the parking passes and park where we should park. So, you know, I took the time to go get you a parking pass. Oh, um, thanks, so There Ryan. you go. Just make sure you park in the right area. All right. See you later. This has been Ryan Bokey and Brian Baxter. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Ryan. The parking permit system is still very new, and as our school size changes, so will the permit system. Speaking of changes, there's a major one being made in the nation, specifically to the Deferred Action of Childhood Arrivals program, more commonly referred to as DACA. To gain some insight on what DACA was and how changes to it are impacting our community, we go to our reporters. I'm Avery Doan. And I'm Jessica Harke, and we're your co-reporters for this piece. On September 5th, Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced the consideration for the Deferred Action of Childhood Arrivals Program, or DACA, would be phased out within the next two years. After this announcement, many people began to fear what this meant for their immigration status, while others wanted to know what DACA is and why it was so impactful. To learn more, we went to an informational session hosted by Youth Power 365 at Battle Mountain. So in 2012, President Barack Obama announced the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, the DACA program. And this gave eligible and documented young adults um, a two-year stay of deportation. So it was never a legal status, okay? But it did protect them from deportation and a work authorization. Since DACA was an executive order, it's up to each president whether or not they wish to continue the program. Yet, this particular executive action holds a lot of power regarding the future of hundreds and thousands of young immigrants. So my own research and the research of other prominent scholars who have been looking at the experiences of undocumented young adults shows that these young people have been able to make significant 
economic and educational gains as a result of the program. So they have been able to get better jobs, jobs that have health insurance and other important benefits. Many have returned to college. So this program has really opened the door to including undocumented young people who for all intents and purposes have spent most of their lives here and consider themselves a part of this country and see their lives here. While researching for this report, we spoke to several DACA recipients to hear their thoughts about the termination of the DACA program. It means I have a future. It means I was part of a select few Americans that were given the opportunity to follow your dreams. Something I wish more people knew about us is that we're just like them. The average dreamer came here at the age of four. We've been pledging our allegiance to our flag next to you for our whole lives. Our dreams are just as important as everyone else's and we deserve the chance to be able to persist. I'll be losing so many things and it breaks my heart. We were just a couple of kids that didn't know that we were breaking the law coming to another country to look for a better opportunity away from all the madness in Mexico. If you or a family member is a DACA recipient, here's what you need to know about your DACA status for the next two years. If you applied before September 5, 2017, your application will still be processed. If you are a current DACA recipient, your DACA will still be valid until its expiration date. And if you have a DACA that expires on or before March 5, 2018, you can still apply for renewal. And to reapply, it has to be by October 5, 2017. But what happens after March of 2018? As of right now, there's no definite answer. Congress is currently searching for alternatives for the program, such as the DREAM Act, which shares the overall concept of DACA, yet leads to citizenship. Another alternative is the Bridge Act, which is the same thing as DACA, except it's a law instead of an executive order. Although the future is uncertain, the situation will continue to develop. We'll keep you updated on what happens next. This has been Jessica Harke and Avery Doan. Back to you in the studio. There are changes in the parking lot, changes to DACA, and now changes within the Eagle Valley staff. We have a bunch of new teachers this year, including our new choir director, Mr. Bungie. Mr. Bungie sat down with our reporters this week to tell us a bit about himself. Thanks. This is Alyssa Holderness. This is Mr. Bungie. Mr. Bungie is new to Eagle County. Hello, my name is Mr. Bungie and I am the vocal music director here at Eagle Valley High School. I went to a music camp, summer music camp, and it changed my life. I'd never been, I'd never been to a place like that. A place where the campers cared about music as much as I did. and. Um, the faculty were amazing. I would never really looked up to a single director until then and uh, the people that made the biggest impact on my life were the counselors. Um, I thought they were the just the coolest people. I, I wanted I wanted to hang out with them. I wanted to I wanted to be like them. I wanted to go to school with them uh, and they're all Luther graduates or current Luther students and um, I did. I went to Luther. Uh, my hope is in the next couple years, uh, we have over 100 students uh, participating in the program, uh, gaining that 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 experience, um, and where we could add more choirs, uh, more mixed choirs, more after-school a cappella ensembles, stuff like that. We're the Eagle Valley Singers, and we want you to join choir. Why? Because we're trying to change the world one song at a time. Mr. Bungie is having a great energy to Eagle Valley High School, and we're so lucky to have him. Back to you guys in the studio. If you want to meet more of our new staff, be sure to visit our website, eaglevalleystudentmedia.org, for additional content. This week in sports, the Devils have quite a few games coming up. On Friday, volleyball has away games against Palisade. Football has a home game Friday night against Evergreen. And on Saturday, many of our teams will be competing both at home and away. Be sure to check out the athletic schedule. 
For a quick tutorial on how not to spectate the sporting events you attend to support your Devils this weekend, we go to Kaikea and Sam. And we promise it's not at all cheesy. This is Sammy Warner. And this is Kaikea Caballero. We're here to talk to you about how not to spectate fall sports. Ah, oh, volleyball. The fourth most popular sport in America. Probably the first most popular in our school. Rule number one, know when to cheer. Guys, we're serving. Shh. Rule two, don't bring friends from other schools. Yeah, battle now. Woo, got it this time. She doesn't even go here. Touchdown! Rule three, don't be a know-it-all. Oh my gosh, you should have passed the ball. Are you kidding me? What are you doing? Run faster. <sighs> Rule four, don't try to catch a foul. I got it, I got it. Rule five, nowhere to watch. Woo! Woo! This is Sam. And this is Kaikea. And, and this, this has been How Not to Spectate Sports. Well, that's all we have for you this week. We'll see you next time with another episode of EVTV. EV